Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com, LearningToMix.com, and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're going to take a look at the second plugin in the um, all-in-one Tony Maserati Signature Series Collection of Plugins by Waves. We're going to take a look at the drums plugin, um, and we're going to take a look at it on some singular drums um, and show you how this kind of works. These are great plugins for people who just want to get these on their tracks, turn a couple of knobs, and get things sounding really good really quickly without having to know a whole bunch of about compression and EQ curves and fundamental frequencies and all that jazz. You could just throw these on here and get things sounding good really quick. So we're gonna take a look at that and listen to some sound examples. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, please hit that subscribe button. Also go out to facebook.com slash home recording made easy and follow me there. And for more tips, tricks, concepts, and training around all aspects of home recording, mixing and mastering, be sure to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com check out the quick mix series as well as the made easy series it will absolutely help you make better music mixes masters in your home studio i promise and if you want to then take a deep dive into learning the craft of mixing and join a community of like-minded people who are all getting better at the craft of mixing head on over to learning to check out what i have going on over there with my good buddy and colleague pete woge from mixbetternow.com we have a fast-growing community of like-minded home recording musicians and aspiring audio engineers and it's a great site learning to mix.com check it out you won't be sorry so now let's head on into to studio one and let's take a look at the tony maserati drums plugin so as i said these plugins are great because they sound really good they're really musical you don't need to know a lot about compression and eq and you can just slap it on there and you can get things sounding good really really quickly these are great for musicians who are just recording at home don't want to know about engineering just want good sounding tracks <clears throat> so on the drums plugin let's take a look at the layout and then we'll listen to it on some drums and you can see what you think so over here um, at the bottom here, we have these uh, three, six, seven buttons here. And this uh, will um, will dictate what drum you're putting this on. So for example, this is on the kick drum. So we have the BD, the bass drum selected. Um, we have snare top or snare bottom, depending on what your source material is. Hi-hats, toms, overheads, and rooms. And by choosing these different uh, source material, um, will then uh, under the hood affect the EQ curves um, and such that go on with the plugin. So you don't need to know anything about that. So the first thing you do is you put this on a track. In this case, we're on our kick drum, pick the bass drum uh, selector uh, switch. And then from there, you go to your sensitivity uh, dial here on the left hand side. So now with these plugins, the optimal thing to do and the way the manual instructs you, us, us to do is you want to turn up the sensitivity, which will increase the input signal into the plugin. So this LED next to it on the left turns like a yellow color. That is the optimal setting um, to get enough signal going into this plugin to make it sound its best. It'll go from green all the way down, all the way up to red, which is clipping. Uh, we want to try to hit that yellow stage, which I'll demonstrate that in a minute. From there, we go to the thump dial. Thump dial is going to take care of our low frequencies. You don't need to worry about the EQ curve. You just need to know that that's our low frequencies. And that's going to change depending on what source material you pick down here with these selector switches. We have our snap. Now, what our snap is going to do, it's going to control the character of the signal tra of the uh, transients of the signal. Um, so the higher values of snap, the more you're going to kind of hear the transients kind of come through and it's going to be more pronounced, okay? So it's going to get a little bit more snappy. And again, we'll take a listen to that. Then we have our treble, which is going to control our high frequencies. And then we have our output um, to uh, adjust for when we're turning up the sensitivity, we're turning up the signal volume. We can compensate by turning down the output. So when we bypass the plugin here up in the top left-hand corner, we go from bypass to enabled. The overall volume of the plugin should be the same. That's called level matching the plugin, and you want to do that. And then over here, we have our big, nice dial here, a meter uh, that uh, will uh, either meter the input or the output signal, and you choose that by this toggle switch here input, output. And that's it. Really simple plugin to use. We also, <clears throat> excuse me, like with all the Waves plugins, if you click on this load button up here at the top right, you'll have a bunch of presets that you can also check out based on the, the source material. So in this case, our bass drum, we have some bass drum presets, our snare, hi-hats, so on and so forth, and even a miscellaneous category that you can try out for yourself. So now here we are. We got our drums all kind of soloed up here, and we have this on the kick drum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this quickly and I'm just going to solo up the kick drum here so you can hear what it does on the kick. And then we'll take a look at the kick snare, maybe the overheads in this video. So let's open up our kick here. 
And now, first and foremost, as I say in all these videos, you want to listen to this on hopefully a good set of studio um, cans or a good set of studio monitors. If you're listening to this on a smartphone or earbuds or a crappy laptop or something like that, you may not hear some of the subtleties in these plugins. And these plugins are made to be subtle. So even as we're turning the dials here, you're not going to get any kind of real radical difference from one to the other. In certain areas you will, but in certain areas you won't. And if you're not listening to this on a good system, you may not hear those changes, so keep that in mind. So here is our kick drum. So let's turn it on after I've kind of preset it and let's just see what it sounds like and then we'll walk through the controls. I'll turn this up a little so you can hear it a little bit better. Okay. So we're gonna start with our sensitivity. We've already picked our bass drum. Okay, so sensitivity is all the way down. You really can't hear it. So now we wanna turn this up so our our, our LED kind of lights up yellow. Okay, if we go too far, let me just turn this down so I don't blow out your ears. You're going into the red there. We don't want to do that because we're going to get some audible uh, di digital distortion. We, we want to be careful of that, right? So we want to back this off. Okay, we're in that green on the heaviest hits, we're in that yellow stage. Now let's take a listen to the thump. What does that do? Okay, that's no thump, right? It's a whole lot of thump. Okay, snap. Which should be more of the beater. Not a whole lot going on there with snap. It's really, really subtle. And that could be because the way this kick drum was recorded, it could have been that the high end was only already rolled off and there's not a lot of information up there. So keep that in mind. Remember, when we go to like snare drum, the snap's gonna get a little bit more uh, pronounced there uh, on the higher frequencies. But it's really, again, to, uh, to really control the transients more than anything else, right? So, let's, uh, so let, let's turn it all the way down and let's just listen for that initial hit, that initial attack on that first transient. Okay. So you can hear a little bit more of the uh, the transient, a little bit more of the click, not the click of the beater, but the beginning of the transient's a little bit more pronounced. And that's exactly what this control does. This is too much, it's exaggerated. So you're going from more of a softer and a kick drum all the way down would be a little bit more of a pillower, more of a pillow <laughs> hit, you know, more of a more of a softer hit, okay, beater to the to the kick drum all the way up is gonna be more of a more um, cut through, uh, more aggressive. So we dial it into taste and it really all depends on your source material and how it was recorded, right? Now let's go to the treble and see what that does. Now this should bring out a little bit more of the slap. There we go. And then we have our output here. Let's bypass the plugin. It's before. After. Have a little bit more hit on the train. You can hear the transient cut through a little bit more due to our snap. Um, and again, the way you would adjust maybe the treble would be in the context of the whole drum kit, maybe in the context of the mix. You want that the beater of the kick to come out of the mix a little bit more. The treble would be a good uh, way to do that as well as the snap. So you kind of use those kind of in conjunction with each other. And then again, the output. That is the kick drum, okay? Let's take a listen to the snare now. So here's our snare, and I'll just, I'll mute the kick. Okay, so this is a software drum, obviously. It's not a live drum, uh, a live um, drum kit, which is totally fine. It's probably a MIDI kit of some kind. So here we are. We picked our snare top because that's what this is, okay? And once again, let's uh, go through the controls. So we'll start with our sensitivity.
get into that yellow area. Really thins it out. Okay, so the thump on the snare top is going to be at a different frequency than it is on the kick drum, right? On the kick drum, it sounds like it's somewhere between 50 and 60 hertz. On the snare top, it looks sounds like it's somewhere between maybe 120 and 140, 150, it's somewhere in that ballpark. Let's go to snap. Okay, so again, on the snap, you can hear the stick hitting that drum right at that transient point. It's a lot more cut when you turn up the snap. So again, maybe that's a little bit much, maybe somewhere in the middle. It's before. after. Okay, so it just instantly just takes what you have, especially if you have a well-recorded track, and it just makes it sound better, right? Really quick, thump low, treble high, snap, how, how you want that transient to kind of cut through, and then hit the sensitivity and turn down the output and you got yourself a decent sounding snare drum, right? You don't need to know anything about EQ. You don't need to know anything about, uh, you know, compression or transient designers or anything like that. You just turn it on there and you get it rolling. Now let's take a listen to maybe our overheads here. Uh, well, we have, uh, this is, there's not overheads, there's kind of a crash, kind of a, a, a ride, there's a ride here, crashes and such. So let's just listen to our ride over here and see what that does. Let me get to the ride section of this and just see what we have happening. There we go. Okay, so I picked our overheads because that was most appropriate. It's a ride symbol you can hear. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, dial this in. Let it loop around again, then we'll bypass it. That's before. And then output down. Okay, so it really makes that symbol, the ride symbol kind of come out. It doesn't sound, uh, you know, shr shr uh, shrilly or harsh or nasty. It just sounds good. Um, so again, you know, the way uh, the EQ curves are kind of predetermined under the hood based on the selector, it uh, actually works out pretty well. It, so it sounds pretty good. I think it sounds great. And then if you follow this up on all your drums, which is what I've done here, I did the same thing with the hi-hats for the toms, for all the crash cymbals, right? And then you can, have, if you bring it down to a drum bus, which is what I've done here. And if you check out my last video in the archive, I go over the groups plugins where I put it on the drum bus. And this is made to go on the buses uh, or instruments 
instruments or the master bus and then tweak it in even further, you can hear uh, in that video how it really brings the whole drum kit to life. So it is really a, a great plugin. Um, again, simple to use gets the track sounding great right out of the box without having to know uh, any any real uh, deep understanding of EQ or anything like that. It just works really, really well. The only thing I wish it had in the in this drum plugin is I wish it had some compression like it does on the groups plugin, but we could talk about that later. So you may wanna follow this up with some compression either before or after this, but this is what gets you going in the right direction. So I think this is a great plugin. Again, you can go out to waves.com, you can download it and demo it for 14 days, I believe. And throughout the course of the year, you can get these plugins on sale. Uh, I bought the whole Tony uh, Maserati uh, pack with five plugins in it uh, for, I think it was for 69 US dollars, which is a fabulous deal. And I think they sound great. So I urge you to go check them out. And, and uh, if you're looking for a quick way to get your tracks to sound great, this is a good way to do it. And just remember, it all really depends on the source material. If you have really crappy recorded tracks, this is not going to fix that. This is just going to take what you already have, and it's going to take it to the next level and enhance it. So you really want to start with well-recorded tracks to begin with as always and these plugins can really help so i hope you enjoyed this video taking a look at the drums plugin by tony maserati in conjunction with waves my name's been david with vignola with home recording made easy and learning to mix.com come on back for the next video where we're going to take a look at the bass plugin the guitar plugin the vocal plugin the keyboard plugin the acoustic guitar plugin and if you haven't already watched it go check out the groups plugin uh, that i have on my youtube channel in the archive and i will see you guys in the next video take care